Hi, my name is Phil Calvert. I'm the author of Successful Seminar Selling, the ultimate business guide to boosting sales through seminars and workshops. In this section, we're going to look at five key decisions that you need to make if you're planning a seminar, uh, as if you're planning a successful seminar. Five key things that you need to think about. First of all, your objectives. You need to write down, and the key here is writing down, what your objectives are for this particular event. Is it to raise your profile locally? Is it to show off a new product or service? Is it to make money by selling tickets? Your objectives could be anything, but only you will know, but you have to write it down. If you don't have a key objective for your seminar or for your workshop or for your product showcase, trust me, your event will fail. Get it written down. You also need to have another objective for somebody else, and that's an objective for the people who come to your workshop. So again, you need to write down what it is that you want them to do, to remember, to act on, or perhaps to purchase as a direct result of coming to your seminar. So two key objectives there to get written down. Again, if you don't get them written down, trust me, your seminar will be vague, it'll be wishy-washy, and you won't get the bums on seats that you really want. The second decision that you need to think about is the subject matter. What are you going to talk about? Now, for many people, they've got a vague idea in the back of their mind. Yes, let's put on a seminar on a particular subject. But they don't have a really clear idea of what it is that you're going to talk about. One of the best ideas that I use, certainly when I'm putting on seminars, is I actually ask my target market what they would like me to put a seminar on. And I often use uh, surveys on my website, or I use a tool called SurveyMonkey, or I actually ask people what it is that they would come to if I was to put on a seminar. So, for example, I've done seminars in the financial advice world for uh, for financial planners and for IFAs and mortgage brokers, and I'll put on my website a list of seminars that I think that they might be interested in. And I list them out, and I send a survey to my list, to my target market, and I say, if you were going to come to a seminar, or if you're interested in coming to a seminar, which one of these would you be most interested in? More often than not, I find that the ones that I think they won't be particularly interested in are the ones they really go for. So think very carefully and ask your target market what subjects they would like to come to. We now need to think about who we target to actually come to our seminars. And there are three quite distinct groups of people that you want to go for. The first group of people is your existing customers. They are much more likely to actually turn up because they already know you and you already have a relationship with them. Targeting your existing customers is also a great way to cement recently new relationships, to build on existing relationships, and also to remind them that you exist. So invite your existing customers to come along to your seminars. The second group of people you want to go for are people you've got business relationships with, perhaps professional connections, perhaps associates who introduce business to you. Again, they already know you, you already have a relationship with them, and they're much more likely to come along. And they may well pick up tips and ideas about your products or services which they can, which they can use and recommend people to you. The third group of people you need to go for are just plain prospects, people who've never met you before. They may be on your email list, on your marketing list, but by and large, these are the people who just respond to your marketing, be it your mailers, be it how you promote yourself on the internet, maybe through advertisements in the local newspapers. The next decision you need to make is whether or not you're going to charge for your seminar. Now, I can convince anyone in the world that they need to be putting on seminars or workshops as a way to promote themselves and to sell more products and services. But when I say to them, you in fact should be charging people to come along to your seminars, many of them go, not sure about that, I don't think that'll work for my business. After all, my seminar is a marketing activity. Well, let's just imagine for a moment that uh, a local financial advisor was putting on a seminar about pension planning or inheritance tax planning or how to save money. Uh, And let's say there were two firms offering identical seminars, and one of them was charging nothing at all, it was free, and the other one was charging, let's say, £257. Which of those two events do you perceive to be offering the most value? And that's what it's about. In fact, there is actually no evidence at all to suggest that if you charge a reasonable and sensible amount that reflects your expertise, there's no evidence to show that that will actually put people off coming to your event. So it is a key decision to make, am I or am I not going to charge people to come along? But if you do charge, of course, what a fantastic new income stream your seminar will create. And you end up with a lovely position where people are paying to be your prospects. The final decision you need to make is, of course, location, date, and time. Location is absolutely critical, and most people tend to go for the usual suspects, some of the big branded hotels. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but they don't really add much value to your potential event. 
If you're sitting in one hotel, you could be sitting in any hotel, for that matter, anywhere around the, ro- anywhere around the world. So I try to go for venues that are just a little bit different, are attractive in their own right, uh, and that might just tip the balance to encourage people to come along. Look for something slightly different, but wherever you go for, make sure, and here's an important tip, that there is natural daylight in your seminar room. The date, obviously, if, unless you're selling ice creams or uh, cold drinks, avoid August like the plague. Also avoid a week either side of half term. So that's, broadly speaking, three weeks, several times a year that you need to avoid. A lot of common sense is needed here, but a lot of people tend to put these things down to chance and they go for the date that's most convenient with a local hotel. Five decisions that you need to make to get a successful seminar off the ground.